entertain the Cincinnati Reds in the finale of a three-game series. It's education day, so a lot of school students will be on hand, hoping to see their Pirates defeat the Reds and avoid being swept in this three-game series. The Pirates turned that trick on the Reds in mid-April. Now the Reds trying to do the same to the Buccos. Greg Brown, along with Bob Walk. The Pirates did everything right in that series in mid-April against the Reds. But, Bob, the opposite has happened here, and especially the offense. It's gone silent in the first two games. Yeah, really a, a huge difference between that first uh, series in early April. You can see the numbers, uh, you know, bear that out, the, the runs per game. A half? How do you score a half a run? I mean, it, it really has been night and day. And I guess you tipped your hat a little bit to the pitching of Bronson and Royal Cueto last night. They uh, both did a great job. Bronson and Royal did most of his work, uh, you know, really, you know, a lot of breaking balls, kind of a, a soft tosser. Uh, and Cueto, he's a power man, and he just was uh, throwing a ball bias. Uh, he worked the ball inside a lot last night. And he was as dominant as we'll see all year. Yeah, the one-hit shutout for Johnny Cueto. First complete game, first shutout of his career. The Pirates now face Homer Bailey for the Cincinnati Reds. And if they're going to find that offense today, really should be the day. You would think so. Uh, you know, you look at what he has done this year. You add up his walks and hits. Uh, he's got 60 base runners in 31 innings. Throw in six home runs. This could be the day we break out. And for the Pirates on the hill, it is Zach Duke who faced the Reds in that series in mid-April and pitched very well. Some seven innings against Cincinnati. And Zach Duke felt pretty good about his last start as well on Friday against the St. Louis Cardinals. Yeah, he had a, a pretty big bump in the road his last couple starts in April, but uh, he was able to, to put those behind him, and now he's back to you know pitching well and keeping us in the ball game. And I think that's what we're going to get from Zach this afternoon. He's 27 and 25 lifetime at PNC Park with an ERA just over four. Zach Duke against Homer Bailey. It's the Pirates and the Cincinnati Reds. Matinee baseball, a lot of fun coming your way. Buckles and Red. Back at PNC Park, Lastings Village, and Andrew McCutcheon. Pre-game hug with a parrot and ready to go. Pirates and the Reds, including this three-game series. The Reds line up. Looks like this. It's brought to you by Toyota moving forward. Orlando Cabrera leads off at Brandon Phillips and Joey Votto. Career against Zach Duke. Votto hitting 625. Scott Rowland hits cleanup. Johnny Gomes in left. Jay Bruce, the right fielder. In center field, it's Drew Stubbs with Ryan Hannigan behind the plate and Homer Bailey on the hill. Yeah, take a look at the uh, numbers on the year. Uh, ERA is a little uh, deceiving. He had those two starts where he gave up 12 earned runs. Uh, last two starts of May, or excuse me, April, and that, that kind of messed things up for him as far as his stat page, but but pretty solid, regardless of the 5 ERA. Nice game last time out. And ready to go, Orlando Cabrera takes ball one. Cabrera one for four, the opening game of the series. Sat last night in favor of Paul Janish. And it's one ball and one strike on Orlando Cabrera. 269 average with three homers and 16 RBIs. And he bunts the ball foul. It would have been an easy hit. With the third baseman LaRoche back. Boy, it was cold and rainy last night. It is moist here. 83 degrees, 83% uh, humidity, 56 degrees. And overcast skies. Wind very mild this afternoon. And it is kind of in my mind keeping me comfortable. A little uh, sweater or a light jacket. And everything's fine. Even a sweater vest. Ball hit in the air to left. Millage. On the 1 2 pitch. Cabrera flies to left. So you see. Village in left and the rest of the Pirates defensively. Of course, the center fielder is Andrew McCutcheon and Garrett Jones is in right field. The corners this afternoon, Andy LaRoche and Steve Pierce at first. Bobby Crosby at shortstop with Aki Iwamura at second. And Jason Jaramillo gets the call behind the plate for Duke. Johnny Cueto, a one-hit shutout last night. Pirates have scored one run in the first two games of the series. The home run by Ronnie Cedeno leading off the eighth inning against Bronson Arroyo on Monday. Cedeno had the only hit for the Pirates last night, and he was hit by a pitch from Cueto in the sixth inning, hit by a pitch on his left wrist. So he's not in there this afternoon. Cueto wasn't shy about coming inside last night. 
Yeah, I know he, he threw one in to Delwyn Young. That Andy LaRoche was right, right off Delwyn's chin. Mm -hmm. Wait, oh, those were purpose pitches, no doubt. No walks, eight strikeouts. He's a power guy, good fastball, and that's the way a lot of power guys will do it, though. When they do waste a pitch, they like to put it up and in. Wait, didn't waste too many pitches, that's for sure. It had to be his best game ever in that regard. Ball hit into the corner for Brandon Phillips. He'll have himself an extra base hit. And in scoring position with one out. A double for Brandon Phillips. His third hit of the series. Came in batting just 207 lifetime against Zach Duke. This is a, a slider, perhaps. Yeah, I think that's what that was. Probably trying to throw it on his hands. Got it down a little bit below the belt. So I was able to get the head to it and keep it fair. Actually I kept it fair by a bunch. And his seventh hit and 30 at bats in his career against Duke. We mentioned Votto, 625 career average versus Zach Duke. 10 for 16. Votto was two out of four last night with a pair of ribbies. And now with 22 RBIs on the year for the Cincinnati first baseman, Joey Votto. Shortstop Crosby. Coming in towards second. He wanted to, you know, Duke to give him the ball, but the, kind of caught Duke maybe off guard a little bit. And Zach did the right thing. He just went ahead and stepped off the back of the rubber. Let everybody get reset. <laughs> one ball and one strike on Votto. Eight game hitting streak snapped on. Monday night with an 0 for 4, but trying to start another one with his 2 for 4 performance last night and scored a couple of runs. Mono, a second round pick in 2002. Difficult time last year battling depression and panic attacks in and out of the lineup. Another Pickoff attempt and no throw from Duke, and now Crosby wants to talk to him. And yeah, their timing definitely is not uh, clicking right now, Crosby and Duke. Crosby's been throwing that glove open, wanting the ball, and Duke, Duke has been hesitant to make that move to second. And Bobby's saying, hey, go ahead and, and turn and fire. I'll be there for you. Step off, got to step off. Oh. Long Good. pause and now throws and a drive to right. Look at this. Maybe Phillips a distraction. Yeah, you, you, you have to step off there. I, I, and he know, just what? serves up the home when run the, to Votto. When the shortstop goes to the bag and then stands there, you know, and, and you're just waiting this whole time and you're watching him. You can't be really focused on now your pitch. And he throws a breaking ball, and I think he might have hung it a little bit. We'll see the replay and see where it's at. But uh, right, right now, just go ahead and go ahead and step off. Now he's got to wait for Crosby to get back to his position. And oh yeah, boy, he hung that breaking ball big time. You got to think that what was going on at second base, you know, had to distract him a little bit. And earlier, he stepped off and reset everything. That's what you want to do. And now into the right center field gap. Roland is retired as Jones makes the catch. Well, another look at obviously distracted by Phillips and what was going on at second. Now look at the location on this breaking ball. I mean, that's just a you know, belt high down the middle. That's that's a hanger. Motto's eighth of the year, his second off a left-hander. And the Pirates find themselves down to zip. The sixth home run allowed by Zach Duke this season. Johnny Gomes, 333 lifetime against Zach Duke. 
Gomes 0 for 5 last night. He and the shortstop Paul Yanish, the only starters that didn't have at least a hit. Even Cueto, the pitcher, legged out an infield hit in the eighth inning. And now three balls, no strikes on Johnny Gomes. Three one count on Gomes. And Duke walks him. Watch again uh, this the home run. Watch Brandon Phillips react to the home run by Joey Votto. The Reds have over the years have not been shy about uh, you might want to say a cocky attitude over the years. They've had their share of players that uh, in, in some people's minds show up the opposition. Phillips trots home and Votto the home run to give the Reds a 2 nothing lead as Jay Bruce takes ball one. Bruce three for five last night. Well that wasn't anything like what Cueto did last night. Well, Cueto was incredible. Yeah, that, the walk. Uh, and he just walked and uh, he actually had to turn around before he got the plate and tell uh, Heisey. Heisey to slow down the hold up. I've got my because I'm not going to be in yeah, a hurry. I've got to walk home slowly and that was after he just beat out an infield hit uh, and I, that, that really got him. You know, I, it got under my skin. I, I wasn't really liking the way he was throwing inside on everybody to begin with. And when he when he walked around on that home run, that that bothered me a little bit. And of course, Heisey, his first career home run, he was trying to sprint around yeah. the bases. Two and one, the count now on Jay Bruce. Johnny Cueto, the one hit shutout, struck out eight. Did not allow a walk since 1900. Only two other Reds pitchers have thrown a complete game shutout while allowing no more than one hit, walking none, and striking out at least eight. Jose Rijo in 1993 did it against the Rockies, and former Pirate John Smiley did it in 1996 against the Cardinals. Those two pitchers, like Cueto, allowed one hit, no walks, struck out eight. Fly ball toward right at the track. Jones gloves it. A one out double for Brandon Phillips and then the home run by Votto gives the Reds the early advantage. Inning against Homer Bailey trailing two zip. Pirates light up. Does not keep you a more steps to the plate. And the lineup brought to you by Suzuki, Aki Iwamura, followed by Bobby Crosby and Andrew McCutcheon, who's a 444 career hitter against Bailey. Then Garrett Jones, Steve Pierce from Lasting's Village, Andy LaRoche, Jason Jaramillo, and Zach Duke. This is the man at the plate that the Pirates have got to get going. He has to get going. The top of the order, and he swings at the first pitch, and it's a fly ball to left. And the catch made by Johnny Gomes. One pitch, one out, and Iwamura drove it deep. Now Gomes, a real late break on that ball, almost. Uh, made it an extra base hit there. You see Homer Bailey's numbers. They're not pretty. 32 innings pitched, 18 walks. I mean, that's uh, to go with, uh, I think, uh, 42 hits. We're talking 60 base runners in those 32 innings. Here's the play again, and Gomes, uh, first couple of steps, he. Wasn't going very fast, and then right at the end, he had to turn it on and make that play. But I agree, Greg. I mean, one of the problems that we're having right now with this offense is definitely you got a guy with a uh, uh, about a, a 270 on base percentage leading off, and it's it's got to have its an effect. Effect. It's but it's not just hockey. It, it, it has been everybody of late. Iwamura won for his last 26 at bats. Very important position in that uh, batting order. The leadoff man. Uh, the, the first inning is is a big inning. You know, most uh, most pitchers, starting pitchers, that's their worst. They usually give up the most runs. That's the inning that the opposing manager can set up that you know, that lineup to where it gives him a best chance to score a run. And the leadoff spot, table setter. You want to score runs. Got to get on base. And Aki uh, with his struggles 
lately. It hasn't helped things. Play going 5 3. As Roland throws to Votto, a fly ball to left and a ground ball to third. The Reds' defense. Gomes, Stubbs, and Bruce in the outfield left to right. Scott Rowland, the seven time Gold Glove Award winner, handled that routinely to Crosby Bowser. Cabrera and Phillips up the middle. Hannigan, battery mate for Bailey. Jay Bruce in right field. They are raving about this guy's uh, arm in their last homestand at Great American Ballpark. That's where you put the big arms. Dusty Baker says uh, he was asked the other day about some of the great arms he has seen over the years, and right away he rattled off, you know, Clemente and uh, Reggie Smith, Ellis Valentine, Dave Parker, downtown Ollie Brown, Rocky Calavito. And uh, the reporter asked, well, what about Jay Bruce? He said, well, he's coming. He's not there yet, but for modern times, he works really hard at it, and he's getting there. Seven pitches, and the Pirates go down. One, two, three. They trail two nothing. Second inning, it'll be the bottom third of the order for Cincy. The good word, or in this case, the not so good word today, comes from manager John Russell on the quiet bats last night, last couple nights. We've got to score runs. No one is really swinging the bat really good right now. We need some of our players to start hitting. That's the bottom line. I didn't get a chance to talk to John Russell or Don Long after last night's game there as the hitting coach, but I guarantee you, guarantee you that both were very displeased. Not only the fact that the Pirates had only one hit, but the way they went down the last few innings. So much talk about trying to uh, work the count, look for your pitch. That was certainly not the case last night. I mean, Cueto was good, but they didn't make it tough on him. Now Stubbs takes a ball one and two. Not have to go to the film, Greg. <laughs> oh, that old film, huh? Got to go to the film. Yeah. Bob goes into the film room here at uh, <laughs> Old Forbes Field. I mean PNC Park. I mentioned film uh, during the well, when I was talking with Rob, I believe, or was it during the open? I can't remember the pregame show and. Uh, Everybody was getting on me, showing my age, talking of film. Guess we don't have film. Huh? We don't have videotape, do we? Everything is on some microchip somewhere. Ask, ask Blass about that modern stuff. I don't know. <laughs> Base hit for Stubbs. Boy, he is really. I, he, we saw him last year. I thought he was going to be a real good player. He is just off to a horrible start. Yeah, it's interesting in terms of the numbers because the batting average just 185. But two homers and 12 RBIs. Yeah, his slugging percentage, I mean, there's nothing good about what, what he is doing so far. When he gets on base, however, the few times that he has, eight steals in nine attempts. He's an excellent defender in center field. Great speed on the bases. And I, I thought they had found something last year, and maybe they still yeah, have. I think it's, they're it, far it, from it, giving it's up. It's only on been him. a month and a half into this season that he has struggled. Drew Stubbs, one of four homegrown first rounders on this roster along with the starting pitcher today Homer Bailey Jay Bruce the first rounder by the Reds and Mike Leak Mike Leak was off to a 3 and 0 start in his six starts and a 3-10 ERA for their first rounder last year Leak did not play one inning of minor league ball right straight to the big leagues it's not easy to do it so far so good Stubbs again. Eight stolen bases in nine attempts. It's a pretty big number. The most steals on the team. And consider that the Pirates stolen base leader is Andrew McCutcheon with 10. And all that despite a 185 average. Yeah, that's a, he's not on base enough to have that many steals. There they are. 
Now the guys in the truck, the trailer, the gypsies want to make Bob walk through oh, the whole film. There we go. All black and white film. I love the hats. All the hats, yeah. the, the ties. They had to dress for a ball game back then. Mm -hmm. That was. Uh, I, I recognize that film. That was one of Blasters of a good game. Wasn't it? I'm sure it was. All line to right. And extra bases for Hannigan. Stubbs going to be waved home. And the throw will not get him. It's an RBI double for the catcher Hannigan and a 3 0 Reds lead. I don't know if the pitcher coming up had anything to do with the sending with nobody out, but it's still that good speed. And you got to love that, that slide that's straight to the plate, hard and late. That's the kind of, kind of slide that you like to see coming across home. And Hannigan going the other way down in the corner. Another thing that this has done, uh, sending Stubbs home even with nobody out, is it's opened up third base. Now the pitcher Bailey can sacrifice bunt. If he had second and third, he'd have to swing the bat. That's a foul. Try it again. Run it to third. The sacrifice accomplished. Nicely done by Bailey. Couldn't have caught it and rolled it out there any better than that. Reaching out, just giving as that ball hits the bat. Not poking the, the, the bat forward toward the baseball, but just like you're trying to catch it, like it was a glove instead of a piece of wood. Giving ground as that ball hits the bat. Excellent form by Bailey. Cabrera fly to left in the first and it's two balls and no strikes. You have a slow runner at third base and is allowing the pirate infield to, to kind of loosen up a little bit. They're still in trying to cut the runner off but they're not on the grass. They know they got a little bit more time. So playing back in the dirt to try and give themselves a little more range. Hannigan not going to win a lot of foot races. Well, they're in, but they're not. A little pop up the shallow center field that drops in for a run scoring single. Well, you gotta, you, you gotta admire the effort with uh, Crosby. Watch Crosby. Good effort. Rocky sees the ball is going to drop and four nothing lead. Hannah can play that just right. You don't go back and tag on a ball that shallow. You got to go halfway, and if it falls, you can just walk home. Like Cueto did last night. Just walk home. Now it's to third. 
to second for one and the first a double play. Stubbs let off with a hit. He scored on a Hannigan double and then the pop up by Cabrera brought home the second run. Send your favorite Pirates to this year's All-Star Game by voting up to 25 times at Pirates.com. Visit Pirates.com and cast your ballot for the 2010 All-Stars. Vote early. Vote often. Vote today at Pirates.com. Garrett Jones leads off against Homer Bailey. Jones 0 for 7 in the series. And the strike is called. A 7-pitch first inning for Bailey. See if the Pirates don't work him a bit here in the second. Trailing 4-0. You know, that's why I wanted to go back and look at the film mm -hmm. because I wanted to see exactly you know, the, where these pitchers were we were swinging at because a lot of times the, the opposing pitcher won't let you be patient as Bailey just did. He just poured the first two pitches right down there. Boom, boom. You want to be patient? Fine. Hit 0-2. No, I didn't have to look at the film for the last two innings of last night. That's for sure. Higher nope. players were swinging at balls above their necks. On the first couple swings. I gotta go to the film room. I don't remember. I was on radio last night, so I'm like, oh, you weren't I'm watching, watching the game the old-fashioned way from up here, looking straight down. You know, it. these guys, these gypsies, provide you with nice flat-screen TVs so you can watch the game on the monitors. We don't have to. If you're not gonna use them, take them out. Sometimes I just like to look down at the, at the ballpark, at the fan, get the feel of the game. You hearing this, Greg? You hear that? No, no monitor in the booth, in the radio booth. No walk. And Garrett Jones starts the bottom of the second off with a base hit. No two base hit. Overhand curveball, about knee high. Nice job. That's the pitch you don't want to hit early in the count, but once you get behind, they force you to to hit those borderline jobs. You got to expand your strike zone, and that's the whole purpose of uh, you know, not swinging early, trying to get the count in your favor, so that that pitcher has to throw a center of the plate strike, or at least try to, and that you're getting the better pitchers to swing at. The all important first pitch strikes. Homer Bailey facing Steve Pierce, who's one for ten since being called up from the minors, and he takes strike one. Homer Bailey, his last start on Saturday against the Cardinals, went six and two thirds. Gave up three runs, two of them earned, walked three, struck out six. He's just 24 years old. He's still. Uh, in that prospect kind of area. He's got a nice arm. And I'm hoping that he uh, comes through for him. Pierce, a base hit in the right center, puts runners at first and second with no one out. They have some youth over there. The leak you were talking about. Pierce going the other way with the ball outside corner needs. Nice job. First and second for Lastings Millage. As Pierce collects his second hit. Millage one for six in the series. Nobody out. Two guys on. And talking about what's wrong with the offense. What can you do? Well, these are the situations that it, if the offense is clicking at all, you're down by four. You, you have to put up some kind of a run here. It's just mandatory. Find a way. Yeah, they've put us on the floor. We got to get up now. Off the canvas. He's doing his part. Look at that. Yep, putting the whammy on the Homer Bailey. A hard-working bird.
Yes, says the home plate umpire. That's crew chief Jerry Davis. A breaking ball. Uh, a little aggressive. He was kind of really sliding out over that front leg a lot and dragging that bat with him. That called for the swing. He might have been looking fastball on that pitch. Two strikes. Can't guess now, though. He'll stay back and react. Scoring position. Excelling in these situations. Great time for the first home run of the year, wasn't it? Especially could be, could for, be a better time. Especially right for now. Millage. We know Millage is pressing. And he strikes out on a no two pit breaking ball. I think he saw a couple of curveballs. I'm guessing a swing and miss pitch was a slider. We'll take a look here. I don't know. No, I think that was another hook. Broke too big to be a slider. So Millage goes down swinging. Andy LaRoche. Should have looked up at the scoreboard. Could have saw what the vertical break was. Yeah. Okay. Been wild today. It's all over the place. Foul back. Oh and two. Andy LaRoche, one for seven in the series. Game seven tonight. Folks in from Montreal to cheer on the Habs. And that should be two, four, six, and three. Double play through two. Reds lead four zip. Old hard blast. First inning. One out, one on. Joey Votto to the plate against Zach Duke. Votto launches his eighth home run of the season to give the Reds a 2 0 lead. Reds picked up two more in the second. Home run by Votto, the hold hard blast. Brought to you by Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Votto, Roland, and Gomes. And two on this Toronto native, Joey Votto. Reaches out, bounces it to Iwamura. So you wonder who Votto's uh, rooting for tonight. I don't know who you will be rooting for tonight. Game seven, coverage begins at six. Penguins and the Canadiens. Right here on FSN Pittsburgh. Folks taking in a double header of sorts. I'm sure you know, a lot of people sure be walking are. across the bridge and watching the uh, the game at the Igloo tonight. I'm sure there's people here from Montreal, like you were saying mm -hmm. before. It, it'll be kind of nice for them. That they haven't had baseball for a long time up there. Ball fouled out of play. They might be a little. Uh, a little jealous of Nationals are off to a good start. Or if some of the people that still root for the Nationals from Montreal. Or if they're like, no way. Interested to see what their attitudes are about it. What do you miss most about that stadium up there, Greg? Nothing. 
How about the horns? Don't miss it. Oh. <laughs> or the, the electricity going out every game. The, the, That's kind of neat. How about the, the sound of the chairs slapping yeah. up? The, yeah. the spring-loaded chairs? Yeah. That was always a, that, that was a bad place for baseball. Marty and Jerry, our stage managers, guys in the booth. I, mean, I do miss those guys. I miss the press room. That's a great food there. Go ahead. What I do miss is that that was probably the most convenient stadium that you know we didn't stay next to to get to with the. Fabulous subway mm -hmm. system there in Montreal. Really easy to get around. Two and two on Roland. We'll have to uh, do a pregame show one of these days with Orlando Cabrera. Find out uh, what he misses about Montreal. See that they drafted him. I wonder if they could have made a go at it there if they would have had a an actual baseball park instead of the big cement thing. Whoa. Another nice good play stretch by Pierce. from Pierce. And he can play some D over there at first base. Very active, very athletic. See a bit of a shaky throw from Crosby. Here's not only with a good stretch, but played a kind of a tricky hop. I thought that bounced right in front of his glove, but with the, the replay, you could see that it, it bounced out there about a foot and a half in front of him. Excellent play over there at first by Pierce. Saves Crosby over there. Fouls this ball off. One ball, two strikes on Johnny Gomes. Back a couple of quick outs, chance to get through a clean inning here in the third. Maybe get himself on a little bit of a roll because he he can't give up any more runs now. That's it for Zach. Tried to get the. Uh, Shin guards down in the dirt. Get that one blocked, but snuck by him. You always want to stop those uh, two strike pitches. You never know when you're going to get a swing or not a swing and a called third strike. First K for Zach Duke, and the Reds go down one, two, three. After two and a half at BNC Park, Reds lead four nothing. Pirates history brought to you by Day Automotive is on this day in 1955 at Chicago's Wrigley Field. At Sad Sam Jones, Toothpick Jones, no hit the Pirates 4 0. The first black pitcher in Major League history to throw a no hitter. And uh, he did it uh, in an interesting fashion. 4 0 in the ninth. He walked the bases loaded to start the ninth inning and then proceeded to strike out Dick Grote, Roberto Clemente, and Frank Thomas to complete a 4 0 no hitter. On this day, Toothpick Next day on a motor. I thought it was going to be a real skinny guy in that picture. Look all that skinny. Well, he used to oh. pitch with a toothpick. Oh, I if Dusty Baker got that idea like from him or UL Baker. Washington. Yeah, where's Toothpick Baker? Remember UL Washington? UL did it for a while yeah. back in the 70s. Yeah, yeah. Had a long time. Washington spent some time with Pittsburgh later on in his career, and Dusty Baker. I guarantee he's. Oh, well, he doesn't have what? One. Oh, he crossed us up. Ramiro caught looking. You take a look at it. Still, uh, you know, here we are in the third inning, Greg, and uh, Homer Bailey has still thrown just one ball. 22 strikes and one ball. 
Look at that. Oh, ball two for the game. <laughs> Mentioned that his last time out through 120 pitches on Saturday. In his outing. And the strike is called. And that, that over six and two thirds innings, he said to me, throwing 120 pitches is nothing. He said, I showed up the next day and it was like I didn't even throw the previous day. And he was still throwing 96 into that seventh inning. He's not throwing 96 today. He says he always has thrown harder late in games. Doesn't know why. Can't explain it. He's even tried throwing more before the game. Doesn't work. And we'll see if the pitch speed doesn't pick up today as he moves along. One ball, two strikes on Zach Duke. Just gets a piece. Duke one for nine at the plate this season. Just misses two and two. Well, you've been uh, you know all over the place like Bailey. You don't get those pitches. <laughs> Got to prove you can throw strikes before you expect to get a pitch like that. Very sarcastic today. Huh? Yes, you are. Surly. Well, Duke uh, at least has extended the at bat five pitches. Uh, you know, Duke, he is real close to being a regular hitter, though, when he's up there. His great swing. You know, on days he pitches, it, it, it's like having an extra hitter in the lineup. I don't expect him to. Bang one into the river or anything, but he's going to have some quality at bats. And it's still two and two on this pitcher. Career 185. Bailey gets him finally. Back to back K's for Homer Bailey. Stop by the trip total media before, during, or after every Pirates home game. The Hall of Fame Club offers a full menu, plus select drink specials at the full service bar. Don't miss live music, celebrity bartenders, drink specials, and more all season long. Remember, the Hall of Fame Club open to all fans. You don't need a special ticket. For more information, go to pirates.com or just stop by on game day. Be sure to stop by the Hall of Fame Club on Friday, the 21st. And our celebrity bartender will be former Bucko Andy Van Slyke on Friday, May 21st. That was a, a nice shot there also. The little little deck you have off the Hall of Fame Club. Off to the side. Very nice place to go for, you know, spend a couple of innings. Just walk, walk in there from anywhere. It's also where three legends in there today uh, signing autographs before the game. Bob Friend, Chuck Tanner, John Weiner. Where are they at in there? Can you, can, I couldn't make them out. They had food in there. Look over that way. That'll be where John's at. One ball, two strikes. I'll need one more. Fastball. Hockey gets to see another one. Hitless in his last 15 at bats, two for 32 this month. And he goes.
goes down swinging as Bailey strikes out the side. Four zip reds. A year ago, Zach Duke game tying RBI and allows one earned run in eight innings and a victory over the St. Louis Cardinals. Duke giving up just four hits in the eight innings. The one run coming up with Albert Pujols' first inning homer. And Duke would even score a run on a Niger Morgan two run triple that highlighted a four run frame as the Pirates beat St. Louis that day 7 1. Brought to you by PNC. The achiever in us all. Jay Bruce sent Garrett Jones back to the warning track in the first. And four for ten in the series. I think I'll ever, for his entire career, I'll never watch him play a game where I don't think about that first series we saw him, Cincinnati. And what a debut. It looked like he was the next Mickey Mantle. And we had already heard so much about him, what a highly touted prospect he was. And then when we finally got the same, he could do no wrong. But we found it a little rougher than that. Good, good player, no doubt about that. But what, a, uh, what a first series. Drew Stubbs takes a strike. Stubbs like Bruce, a first rounder. Stubbs out of the University of Texas four years ago. He was on base twice the opening game of the series on Monday. A walk, a single. That's a jam shot there. <laughs> Check your thumbs. Deep in the kitchen. Puts this ball to deep center field. McCutcheon back at the wall, and it is gone. Drew Stubbs, his third home run of the season. It's Five nothing Reds. I was watching McCutcheon was going back on it the way he set up. I, I thought he was going to have a shot at it. He thought he might be able to catch that ball. That's for sure. And Stubbs. Anytime a ball goes to dead center field, you you know you have a good feeling it might stay in. I mean that's the deepest part. Although this ballpark there is the notch, but still. Kind of surprised to see it disappear into the bullpen. I'm watching Andrew the whole time. I'm not watching the ball on, and just looking at his, his body language, it was like, okay, he's going to have a chance to catch this ball. Ran out of room. Chance to see some of that Stubbs power last year to his call up. He displayed some of that at PNC Park and in Cincinnati. One particular game he homered in both ends of a day night doubleheader against the Pirates. Yeah, that's why I remember we first time up talking about boy. I thought he was going to be really a, a good player for the Reds. But then yesterday when I looked at this his site wasn't in the lineup. I looked at his stat line. And I'm like, wow, is he scuffling? What a good day this afternoon. The catcher Ryan Hannigan doubled in a run and scored in the second. Pierce to Duke.
Well, you're going to have to really hammer one to get one by Pierce over there into that hole. He loves to go to his backhand. And Duke is there for him. Broken bat. And a base hit for Homer Bailey. The pitcher gets on the hit parade. Seven hits for the Reds. Well, there's two outs, and the pitchers don't normally run very fast, so for them to have a two out single, most of the time that's not going to hurt you. It can actually be a good thing, Greg. You, you get the leadoff hitter out of the way for next inning. Now you don't have to, uh, you know, have to deal with him. Taking a strike. One and one. On Orlando Cabrera, who last year combined with the Twins and A's, drove in 77 runs, the most of any shortstop. Pretty good pickup by Walt Jockety. This. Uh, 35 year old native of Columbia. Good offense and solid defense over the years. Evo Mora scoops and throws to Pierce. A one out homer for Drew Stubbs has given the Reds a 5 0 lead. The mobility trivia question rethink possible. The question is, former Major League Baseball Commissioner Bowie Kuhn vetoed a trade that would have sent which pitcher to the Reds in 76, 77, the winner, I guess, of 76-77? Uh, I'm going to guess. I'm going to, I'll, I'll guess. Uh, I'm not going to say anything. Go I'm ahead. Gonna, I'm going to guess by the blue. Oh, how can you go ahead and and, and it's a guess. give us the answer? It's a guess. That's what I did last night, and Steve Blass went crazy. Oh, because did get, just what you did. And well, I said, that's I the point that's what of this is to, to try and guess. He went yeah. nuts. <laughs> well, we're not even saying that's right. I mean, it exactly. might not be. It could be, uh, could be uh, Blue Moon Odom, Catfish Hunter. Well, I'm going to tell the commissioner uh, last. See, who else could have, Who else was uh, pitching for the A's back in those days? Boy, did he scold me. Raleigh Fingers, maybe? Um, and the truck did, too, by the way. The truck went crazy. Oh, who pays attention to the trailer? Broken bat roller to third. Steve looking quite dapper. There is Mr. Blass. And, and that is a sharp sweater vest he has on this afternoon. Very sharp looking. Get the uh, Anna Maria Island baseball cap on. He and his wife Karen have been going down the, to Anna Maria Island, Bradenton, for a number of years, of course. Tim alongside. Uh, getting Steve's uh, opinion on the last play. <laughs> Andrew McCutcheon fly to right in the first. Homer Bailey falling behind. Two and zero. Oh. Stop the crushes. <laughs> Two and one. 33 strikes and 40 pitches so far for Bailey. I mean, he just pouring him in that strike zone. Bouncer to short, Cabrera. Saturday on Inside Pirates Baseball, Andy LaRoche on a tear at the plate, but see why his swing isn't all the way there yet. Plus, find out how the Bucks have a big bowl of fun courtesy of Zach Duke. Catch all this and more. 
Inside Pirates Baseball, Saturday at noon on FSN. Garrett Jones the other way. Double. Garrett Jones an opposite field double. Yeah, Garrett going up there saying uh, that guy's showing enough of the strikes. I'm picking on the first one I see. Mashes it the other way. So Garrett watching it down the, the line. A nice view of it. I like that camera shot we got right there when we look down that left field line. Sometimes it's hard to see in that corner, but look at that. That's one I like right there, Greg. We, we call it Garda Cam. I like that spot there. That's like you're at the game. I mean, that's where you might be sitting right there. That's the view that mm -hmm. Sitting back there, like one of those rows right there, looking out. I mean, that's that is a classic baseball shot right there. That's great. Named after our director of broadcasting. And then Pierce pops this one up to the right fielder, Bruce. Five zip out of the fifth. You see uh, Ted Black in the sport coat, the vice president and general manager of FSN Pittsburgh. Right now, uh, I was going to say being blocked, but now you see Randy Bauman, part of the DVE morning show. He is a great baseball fan. One of the funniest guys around, that's for sure. Some good, good seats for this afternoon's game. Right there behind home plate. Probably have any a sporting doubleheader today. Those guys will probably be over at the I arena bet. tonight. Yep. John Wayner was hoping to do the same. The Rock was here for that uh, signing out at the Trib Total Media Hall of Fame Club. Was going to catch the game and was uh, hopeful to head to the arena tonight. Well, they have a certain amount of tickets set aside for legends, right? I would think so. A line drive up the middle for Brandon Phillips. His second hit. First Let me see if Zach can uh, throw a ground ball. Pirates have one double play this afternoon. Don't they? Greg? Yes, sir. Okay. So you're taking a little funny look down at your scorecard. Well, I was misspoke. looking at something else, oh, actually. Okay. Sorry. You were doing some research. Yeah. There's a runner. A little hit and run action, and. Not going to work out. Just a lazy fly ball. The AT&T trivia question. That's what you were looking up, huh? No, I didn't guess. I'm not going to guess. You did it already. Oh, you can guess. No, nope. that no, I'm done have, with that. No, obviously no. that would have been I, your. I guess. was scolded. I was scolded. Former Commissioner Bowie Coon vetoed a trade that would have sent which pitcher to the Reds? Fighter Blue. Oh, you got it. Very good. Louis Kuhn said the trade would be bad for baseball. Been good for the Reds. <laughs> well, it would have been good for the Charlie Finley, too. He would have gotten a lot of cash in return. And not Dave.
2 0 on Roland. Charlie was just trying to get something for somebody that he was going to lose in free agency, wasn't he? That's what he said. The best interest of baseball. And they were, were going to throw in some cash, I guess. Pick off. And it worked to perfection. Brandon Phillips is caught stealing on the pickoff. He's guessing. Guessing all the way, running on first move. And a guess wrong. Base hit for Roland. His fifth hit of the series. The Reds now with nine hits. That's a, I don't like that 2 0 steal. 2 0 3 1. I've always thought that that's a chance to take the bat out of the guy. Yeah, you, you want you want the, the hitters to be able to. You know, pick a pitch that they can really drive. You don't want somebody taking a pitch on 2 0 so you can steal a base. And same thing with 3 and 1. Unless, you know, you're running to stay out of a double play on a 3 1 pitch. Uh, I could see that occasionally, certain combinations of, you know, pitcher, hitter, runner. But a guy at the plate like, uh, like Roland, I mean, you, you want him to be able to, you know, pick a pitch and try to drive it on a 2 0 count. So that being said, I'm a little surprised that they would take off there. Job on Aramil keeping that ball in front of him. Two outs. You don't want Roland getting in the scoring position. You did a good job with that that pickoff to prevent it. Aramil taking that ball right, right off the chest protector. Quick look down to first. Make sure nothing was going on. Oh, Pretty big rip. Gomes five years ago finished third in rookie of the year voting behind the Houston Street and Robinson Cano. And goes down swinging. A couple of hits but the Reds do not score and they still lead five nothing. Summary five nothing Reds Joey Votto Reds first baseman one for three and a two run homer in the first inning so far that's all Homer Bailey has needed but Drew Stubbs has added a long ball of his own couple of hits Garrett Jones has two of the Pirates three hits as that offense continues to struggle mightily Pirates uh, were five hit on Monday the one run they scored was on an eighth inning home run by Ronnie Cedeno. They were blanked on one hit last night. The one hit belonged to Ronnie Cedeno. Millage pops this ball up. Foul territory. There's Votto, and he makes a fine basket catch to retire Millage. Oh, well, in May's action. Take a look again over the shoulder in the basket. Saw it except the other day of a. A catcher going back and making a play, you know, yeah. that, that was this routine. They all caught it like mm. that. It oh, looked so funny. Ago, yeah. It looked so odd that he yeah. did it. He just caught it right in front of his belly. And then a little backhand flip over to the third baseman who, who was coming over that direction. Like it was just so routine. But I guess it was because early on they didn't have a hinge in their catcher's glove. So they couldn't really squeeze ah. the pop fly. 
So they caught it in front of them so that they could pin it with the bare hand. Uh -huh. I'm guessing. Hmm. Uh, I'm going to run that by Steve and see what he says. Is if that's actually you, the way it was. There you go again. Well, Blast is taking it hard today, <laughs> isn't he? <laughs> well, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if he only knew, huh? And he will. Oh, yeah. Oh, here. Oh, yeah. Well, why were they getting on you so badly? Well, let's see. It's the last game of the homestand. We won't see you for five days, Steve. And we're jealous of the sweater vest. That's right. Roche turns on it, but it's a fly ball. Oh, tomahawk job. Two outs, and all of a sudden, LaRoche has won for his last 15 at bats. They've been moved down to the number seven spot in the lineup this afternoon. Oh, yeah. John Russell was asked about the struggling offense, and uh, you know, really no answers. Just have to have to find a way. Easy ground ball to first. Six pitches and Pirates quietly go down. One, two, three in the fifth. Five, nothing, Cincy. Sauerkraut Saul had the lead and look at Onion. What saw the late he's, surge? He's hurting. He's hurting the Onion coming on. And uh, and it's not close. Look at Saul dropping back. Onion, a, uh, a man of many layers. Wins by five lengths. A victory like that will bring tears to your eyes. But Saul, uh, he's still the hero of most. They like the red hat. Well, this is interesting. Javier Lopez, after Duke goes only five. You know, one of my spotters were uh, pointing out something earlier that Zach's uh, velocity looked like it was down a little bit today. I hadn't been watching it, but it was pointed out that he was uh, low to mid 80s with his fastball. Maybe he wasn't uh, feeling 100%. You'd have to afternoon. think so. I mean, he's due up first in the bottom of the sixth. I mean, with 87 pitches, if he if he had been healthy today, because this would certainly indicate he's not 100%. You get at least the sixth inning out of him. And uh, then lift him for a pinch hitter, but Duke not able to go into the sixth. Uh, Clement was out on the on-deck circle when the last inning uh, ended. I mean, they, they were going to get him out of there for sure, obviously now, because he, he didn't get to hit. He wasn't pinch hit for, and he still didn't go to the mound. So we'll uh, wait for any reports from the clubhouse regarding Zach Duke's health. He gave up five runs. And five innings on nine hits. Jay Bruce 0 for 2 against him. Now 2 and 2 the count on his former first rounder who has scored a run in seven straight games. He's got 14 RBIs over his last 21 ball games. Didn't like that call. Pitching comparison, Homer Bailey. Look at the, the pitches thrown, 51, 87. And I'm just guessing, I'll bet you 40 of those 51 have been for strikes. 44 out of 51, the boys downstairs uh, tell me. That is just a, an amazing ball strike ratio by the way it, I don't think I've ever seen anybody that has been that locked in on throwing strikes still got a half a game to go but, uh, Bailey has been very impressive I know that somebody pitched against us uh, a couple years ago in Arizona that had a similar ball strike ratio and we ended up throwing about 100 pitches and I'm going to say about 80 of them were for strikes you recall that game? Yeah, I do. Uh, Dan Heron did that. Through, uh, 75 of his 82 pitches for strikes. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's a good memory, Rick. Yep. Oh, 
I think about 40 of those balls that the, the, the strikes that Heron threw, I think, were sliders that day. Mm -hmm. if I 42. Well, actually, like I remember you commenting on that. In fact, I remember you using the Telestrator three times that night. You used it. 3 2 count now on Stubbs, who has singled homeward and scored a pair. Reminds me, I haven't used it today. I have to figure something to draw on. Homer Bailey. Tossing a three hit shutout through five. Line drive caught by Crosby. Stubbs is the second out. Ryan Hannigan has doubled in a run and bounced out. He's got a lot of playing time lately. Why not with that 396 average? He started the first game of this series. It was 0 for 2, walked twice. Last night, Ramon Hernandez started behind the plate and had a couple of hits and an RBI. Yeah, 16 RBIs is pretty impressive, too, out of just 19 hits. That's not too bad. You can see why he's getting his share of playing time. Shaking his head no after that call. Well, the Reds are 18 and 15 now. Three games over 500 for the first time since June of last year. They have won 11 of their last 15. And with the Cardinals losing last night, they're now in second place in the Central Division, two back of the Cardinals. They've won four in a row. There's a toothpick. All right. We knew it would be there eventually. Toothpicks, bubble gums, and baseball. On Education Day here at PNC Park, and right now the the youngsters in the crowd waiting for something to happen offensively. And yeah, they would like to uh, start screaming and yelling. They've had to stay rather subdued. Great turnout this afternoon. The entire upper deck is filled with kids. Millage back. And the Reds go down one, two, three for the second time. Head to the bottom of the sixth inning, looking for some offense. Down five. This one, game one, it was Bronson Arroyo who went seven plus innings, gave up a run on five hits in the 2 1 victory last night. Johnny Cueto went the distance, a one hit shutout. And for Bailey, he has given up just three hits, no runs through his first five innings. Jeff Clement will bat. For the pitcher Javier Lopez. First pitch swinging, rolled to Phillips. Time to check out the sixth inning Coors Light freeze cam. Brought to you by Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. And the pickoff of Brandon Phillips. He had let off the fifth inning with a base hit. Look at Pierce come off the bag. Look where he's standing. Gives him a perfect angle to make that throw to Crosby. Coors Light freeze cam. You can't stay on the bag when you know you have that guy picked off. You know, that left-hand pitcher who's going to take a little while to get you the ball anyway because of the leg kick. You've got to go toward him. Not only is the ball quicker in your hands, but now you get the good angle to make the throw. Good job, Steve Pierce. He, he really does play the position at first really well. Yeah, the more you see him play first base, the more you can understand his frustrations really last year when he came up. Talking about almost being miscast as a utility guy. And that's not to blame the Pirates. They're trying to get him up here. A couple of years ago, so they had him playing some outfield. So 
trying to get him some major league at bats. I mean, it really doesn't, you know, you look at him, you don't say, oh, there's a first baseman. He's not real tall, and, but he is so active. Good hands. Next up for his uh, lack of height, with you know, just wanting to go get the baseball most of the time. And I've always liked active uh, first baseman. This Sid Bream was, um, you know, especially before he hurt his knee, was very active, moving all over the place. And Keith Hernandez, one of the really fine defensive first basemen of when I played. And the same thing you can say about, about him. He was always moving. These days, we'd like to. I know we talked about this. Uh, maybe show some of that during the course of a ball game. Uh, maybe show some of the fine defensive work of Sid Bream. And Sid was uh, outstanding at the, on those bunt defenses. I mean, he, he was always working with the pitcher. He he would come over there all the time and, and let you know what you what he wanted you to do with the baseball, whether it was hold it and go home. You know, give him uh, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, and throw to throw to first because he was going to try and and fake home and get that guy to get off the bag a little bit. He was always thinking, always trying different things to help you out, to get you out of a jam. And it didn't always have to be, you know, one Mississippi. It could be one one thousand, two one. You know, sure. He'd let you yeah. use different words. Right. That's, that was you the know. great thing about yeah. him. He was flexible. Yeah. <laughs> A pop up to the second baseman Phillips. Another zero on the board. Another quick, uh, quick inning. Not many pitches Very out of it. The Florida State League, the high A ball club, the Brayton Marauders. Left hander Jeff Locke was locked in. Six and two thirds, five hits. No walks, three strikeouts. Marauders beat the Daytona Cubs two to nothing. And uh, today at the Triple A Indy at Victory Field. The Indianapolis Indians lead the Rochester Red Wings three to nothing at the bottom of the fourth inning. Neil Walker continues his tear, and Pedro Alvarez drove in his 30th run of the year in that game. And every time we go to the minor league report, you can see good things happening down in Bradenton. The Marauders off to a, a strong, strong start in their what do you call it, inaugural season. Mm -hmm. Evan Meek facing Bailey. Homer Bailey has sacrificed and singled. Lopez went a one, two, three, six. And now Meek. One ball, one strike on Bailey. By the way, it's a Brad Lincoln pitching this afternoon at Indy. He's not given up a hit in four and a third innings. Keep an eye on that one. Meek strikes out. Another one of those uh, players that you just got that feeling that uh, we're going to see him sooner than later. Lincoln, uh, from what we understand, that you know, trying to show that. You know, he has a consistent command of off speed pitches before they bring him up here. Working on uh, you know, throwing the breaking ball for a strike whenever he wants to, mixing in a good changeup. And when he shows everybody at that level that, that he can do that, they're not going to have him up here. Now the other thing, and I, this is going to be, uh, I think, an interesting Neil Huntington show on Sunday, talking to the general manager at. Uh, you know, when your team. Is that every Sunday? It's every Sunday before the Pirates play, sure. But uh, when your team struggles, the, the big league club struggles, and you look down at the minor leagues, people want to know are you considering bringing guys up 
And uh, Neil Huntington has said in the past that, you know, you don't want any knee-jerk reactions. You've got to bring the guys up when they're ready. But it has to be awfully, awfully tempting, especially when you talk about what La Jose Tabata is doing down there. Well, that's the about thing that's really interesting about it is it, it's the, the reason I believe that we're really looking more than even in the past is you've got some guys down there, some names that we've been talking about for a couple of years and you're anxious to see them and they're doing very well at that level. So, yeah, it's it's a very natural thing to, to wonder and uh, when they're going to get it. And Sunday, I'll be standing in that booth listening to you. Will you really? End of the show. Yeah. We'll be at Wrigley Field. Be on uh, FM News Talk 104.7, our flagship, and many of our radio network affiliates. We saw Randy Bauman down there at DVE, one of our sister radio stations. All part of the family. 0-2 count on Orlando Cabrera. But, uh, we'll certainly ask him about uh, what the word is regarding guys like Tabata and, and Alvarez and Brad Lincoln. If Brad Lincoln pitches well again this afternoon. He has had a couple of hiccups. And the other guys, Brian Morris. We're talking about the Bradenton Marauders. Yeah. His numbers are insane down there. At 066 ERA. Oh, the next step for him would be double A Altoona. Yeah, I don't think we're going to. It's been a while since we've seen somebody come from Abel. John Smiley came up in the middle of the year from A ball. He made that jump uh, back in the late 80s. I remember Randy Tomlin made the jump from double A to the big leagues. It's not unheard of, but boy, is that rare. The strikeout of Orlando Cabrera. Very good all season. Hard breaking ball for a strikeout. Brandon Phillips. Four hits now in the series and 11 at bats. In the air to Jones. So Lopez and Meek have been perfect. Lopez a 1, 2, 3, 6. Meek a 1, 2, 3, 7. Nothing ball game in favor of the Cincinnati Reds. Three hits. The story of this series, unquestionably, the silent bats. See if they can get it going here. The last three innings, Homer Bailey is cruising and now faces McCutcheon, Jones, and Pierce, the three, four, five men in the order. McCutcheon has flied to right and bounced to short. He's 0 for 8 in the series. And it, it just seems now, maybe this is way when you're in a funk, and maybe we're, as you say, Bob, we've got to go back and look at the game films, but it seems like even guys like McCutcheon are up there and just bang. Quick at bats. This series. And you always have well, to give, tip your cap oftentimes to the pitchers, of course. You know, I will say this, that, you know, if they're just pouring strikes in there and you go up there and you're taking, well, then you, now you're always hitting 0-2. But at some part in the point of the ball game, when you need five runs and it's late, you say, "Well, heck with it." Then I'm going to have to take the first two strikes and hit 0-2. At some point, you have to state, "I'm going to take until I get at least strike one," because we're going to need some help here. We need some. We need some walks. We need something to get us in the game. And you can't go up there and swing at the first pitch every single time. And we're getting into that habit a little bit, especially these last two days. And you know, I will, as we've talked about. You, know, you really have to sit and, and, and watch a video. We'll call it a video, not a film. You guys had so much fun with that. But, and see exactly where the pitches are. But there are times where it doesn't matter if there's strikes or not. You still have to take it. You've you, you got to take a strike. 
at some point when you're trying to make up a big deficit and it's getting late in the game. Now, that's old school baseball, and perhaps, you know, that's not the thing to do nowadays. I don't know. But yeah, when I first came along, that was, that was automatic. You get behind, you, you start taking a strike. You try to get some help out of that pitcher. If he's going to fall behind in the count, if he was going to get a little wild, maybe walk a few people. And that was what you needed to help you get back in a game and overcome being down by five. Well, Garrett Jones has two of the three pirate hits today, a single and a double, and that leads us to our plays that made you smile from Aspen Dental. The base hit by Garrett Jones in the second inning led off that frame and his two-out double to left field in the fourth inning. The Aspen Dental plays that made you smile. First two hits of the series for Garrett Jones. With that double he hit down in the corner, that was a first pitch. Swing. I don't know. I, I don't really have the answer. You know, Clement got up there a while ago and he hit the first pitch and his pinch hit. But he's six for 11 this season when he puts the first pitch in play. So, you know, what's the right way to go? Six for 11. That's considering what his batting average is overall. That's pretty good. When he puts the first like pitch in play, encourage a guy like that. Yeah, you almost want to say, "Hey, go up there and hit the first yeah. pitch." You're, you're, you're having. Uh, I mean, but look at that one, two, three, four, five. That's crazy. Single digit innings. Of That's course, crazy. This one uh, is is far from being over, but still, you just don't see that. Stubbs racing in. He makes the catch on the 2 0 pitch to Jones. Homer Bailey has it going today. Again, a former first rounder out of LaGrange, Texas. Facing Steve Pierce, who's one for two. Pierce taking ball one. Swings and pops this pitch up. This is incredible. See that, that's why you wow. you're wanting to take a strike to avoid that. Ten pitches. A three hit shutout going for Homer Bailey. Pirates will have their annual fan appreciation day. Register to win this convertible Mini Cooper. Which is on the Riverwalk at PNC Park all year long. So register during every Pirates home game for the rest of the season. Parrot likes it. Oh, those are sweet rides. I, well, I like them a lot. You know, there's a lot of room in those. You know, they're obviously looking at it, go, oh, there's no room in it, but you put the seat back, stretch out, tons of room. Henry Hand needs to work on that ERA a little bit. Yeah, the other numbers are looking pretty darn good. Votto has homered. Bounce to second. Fly to center. The fly ball sending McCutcheon back. Anderhan gets the first out of this top of the eighth. Roland has flied out, bounced to short, singled. Pirates travel day tomorrow, head to Wrigley Field in Chicago. Off day for the Reds. They get ready to host the St. Louis Cardinals for three. Boy, it'll be quite a, a time this weekend in Cincinnati. First place on the line yeah, exactly. that series. The Cardinals hosting Houston tonight. I'm looking forward to getting to Chicago, too. We played the Cubs very well a few days ago. Maybe that's what we need. Get back at those Cubbies again. Well, 
always enjoy our trips to Wrigley anyway. Is Ivy going to have any leaves on it yet? We're told by our resident expert of Wrigley Field, yes. There will be leaves in the Ivy. Some pirate leaves. Well, the grounds crew uh, doing a nice job out there trimming that uh, pirates greenery I remember the uh, nice pine trees used to be yeah. out there I kind of like the pine I trees I did too I asked somebody the other day about that I said they just couldn't they wouldn't take root huh. but they, it was too bad it was a neat kind of a signature item those uh, those Christmas trees from Indiana the Christmas, Christmas tree capital of the world Indiana PA a nice touch but they just couldn't couldn't keep them. Oh, I'm seeing the Ivy the, of Wrigley this weekend. You know that uh, where it says pirates out there. That's a, just a, a roof, a, some kind of a uh, facility. Speaking of the road ahead, brought to you by Toyota. Pirates and the Cubs at Wrigley for a three-game series that starts Friday. And it's. Brian Burris for Pittsburgh against former Pirate Tom Gorzolani. Paul Mahalam starts Saturday afternoon against Ryan Dempster. Sunday, Ross Ollendorf proposes Ted Lilly. All these games on FSN Pittsburgh, all in HD. All three in the afternoon. All day games. Day games at Wrigley. Well, the youngsters, unfortunately, haven't been... Uh, been able to cheer much for the Buckos offensively, but the Parrot has them going. And uh, despite the score, they sure look like they're having a great time here at PNC Park. Education days. A handful of them during the course of the season. Gomes count of two and one. Three and one on Gomes. We're told that uh, these education days, you bring your class for a day, baseball and learning, educator approved Pirates lesson plan and elements of in-game entertainment. Line passed, LaRoche. Johnny Gomes. Walked that down in the corner there for a moment. I thought maybe Gomes might be thinking three. Is that a great camera angle we have that shows the ball going down the line. And most of the time the ball will hit that little uh, outcropping of stands right in the corner and kick the ball out to Millage, but he made it by. LaRoche's effort trying to corral that ball. Got down into that corner. It's kind of a different angle to play. You're not real sure about which way it's going to bounce. Is it going to hit the padding or not? Sometimes it takes a while to get a corral. Nooks and crannies. This ballpark has its share. Of course, right field is where you really have no idea what kind of bounce you're going to get. Barrel.com league leaders. In triples, Jay Bruce with three, Niger Morgan of the Nationals with five. Barrel.com definitely worth the click. Speaking of the looks and crannies and crazy bounces, I like that they were out playing the Giants earlier this year that bounce uh, off the, the archways oh, that, that they was, have that out crazy. there in, uh, in right field. Can't remember now which uh, giant hit that one for an inside the park home run, but that was as weird a hop as you'll ever see. But that's how most of the new ballparks are, that they, they have these kind of little areas built in. And add a little question mark to the outfielder's mind about what's going to happen when that ball hits the fence. And right behind Garrett Jones is always a big question mark. Is it going to hit concrete, steel? Is it going to hit the... the 
chain link netting. Get any kind of a hop off that fence. Bruce draws the walk. Yep, some interesting deflections off the Clemente wall. Drew Stubbs, two hits and three at bats, including his third home run of the season. Zach Duke went five innings, gave up five runs on nine hits. We have not heard about his health. Tapper left side foul ball. Go back to that story in uh, Indianapolis. Pedro Alvarez has hit another home run. Gives him eight home runs and 32 RBIs. How about Lincoln? Is he still? Lincoln, no, no. It's uh, no, a couple of hits off of him. Into the sixth inning. Another foul ball by Stubbs. Count one and two. Ten hits for the Reds. They lead five nothing. Joel Hanrahan following Duke Lopez and Meek. Two balls, two strikes. Stubbs from Atlanta, Texas. Heel, yes. And a snap throw Double first. Oh. Almost got two. Well, they don't need to actually because they got the strikeout on the appeal. Right. So the strikeout that would have given them four outs. Yeah, four outs. Yeah, four. would have been a double play. Yeah. yeah. Head to the bottom of the eight. Five zip. Depot doing more on defense. Jaramillo is not going to take chances. He wants the appeal, and even though he got the appeal, he's going for a double play too. See, he's not the only one that thought we needed two outs. There's strike three inning over, but we're going to get this guy anyway. Good, strong throw. And, and what I, I think was really funny about it is there's the umpire in the background saying strike three, the inning's over. And as he was running in, he also gave the same sign. We're all trying to get two outs, Craig. Everybody's coming that <laughs> way. The Home Depot, more saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. I got a little Home Depot job waiting for me when I get home. Uh-oh. Yeah, I picked up a... New set of uh, attic steps, you know, those pull down kind. At the uh, Home Depot there on Camp Horn. That's my after the game entertainment. Oh, and two on Millage. And Millich has a base hit. The fourth hit of the game for Pittsburgh. Well, don't miss the next T-shirt Thursday of the season, May 20th. Pirates and Brewers here at PNC Park at 705. All fans get a Pirates T-shirt at the gates, courtesy of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Visit Pirates.com slash T-shirt. It's May 20th. 705 against the Brew Crew. Still got time here, Greg, to get a little something going. 
It would be nice to pull one out here in the last day of the homestand. Cincinnati pin kind of thought maybe that lead off base hit would get somebody taken off a jacket or something. Maybe get into that bullpen, get Bailey out of there. With this pitch count only at 75, they're not in any hurry to get the pin working. They've had the night off last night for sure. Arthur Rhodes worked an inning on Monday. Francisco Cordero worked the ninth inning for the save. And that's been it. And they have the off day tomorrow. You have to think. Dusty Baker is probably thinking it would be nice to get that the bullpen some work, as much as he loves seeing his starter go long. Nobody's ever satisfied. No. Well, the starters to go longer. We need more complete games. Well, we also got to get the bullpens and we're out of the bullpens taxed over tax. Shouldn't be ever satisfied. Always striving to be better. They got that big series coming up. Huh? I, I think you'd, you'd like to really have the bullpen very well rested. Well, if they need, need to work. You throw a sideline. I don't think he's anxious to get anybody in this ball game. Right? I, I think he's going to let Bailey finish it off if he can. If he was looking uh, for somebody to do some work, he'd have him thrown in the pen right now. Six. Oh, four. thank you, thank you. Taylor made and Phillips messed it up. Gold glove right like. No, he has won a gold glove, but that certainly was not. Jason Jaramillo will come to the plate with one out. Looks like Cincinnati's going to get somebody up. Well, he is anxious to get some you were, work. You were sending some telepathic messages down to him. And he needs to get his bullpen going. Jaramillo. Oh, what a pick by Phillips. And they turn a double play. I guess they messed the other one up to show us that they could do that. Wow, what a play by Brandon Phillips and then the pick on the other end by Votto. This double play starts with a phenomenal pick and ends with a great pick. AT&T, rethink possible. And by Day Automotive, we're going to make your day. Five nothing Reds. The Reds uh, now looking to complete back to back shutouts over the Pirates as Octavio Dotel will get some work in. Dotel, his numbers on the year. Dotel not able to pitch in the save situation, and then these are the kind of games where he has given up some runs. That's why he's got that high ERA. Pitching in situations just like this. It's just hard for some of these closers, and he's not the only one to get fired up. The game's not on the line. Take a look at that double play again. Uh, it just a you know unbelievable job. The, the way they they messed the other one up that Taylor made, and then. You know, 360 spin from your back. And how about the, the turn? You know, we talked about the two picks at first and out at second. How about the turn? Watch Cabrera. He, he kind of gets strung out. The throw off to the side. 
and, and all he can do now is try to jump straight up in the air. He has no way of getting anything under the throw because his legs aren't on under him. And so it's all leg, or excuse me, all arm, and he gets it done. Oh, Millich, a fine running grab. Beautifully done. Beautifully done. Five nothing game. It won't get a lot of attention, but that's a heck of a play. Yep, it went well off the bat. A line drive straight over your head, kind of a difficult play. Probably the the toughest thing an outfielder will have to do. But I mean, he turned immediately. He knew that was hit hard. Not back there, and made the catch just before he hit the fence. Fabulous catch. But again, in a five nothing game, not going to get a lot of attention. But well, Dotel is thankful because that would have yeah. started off uh, this ninth inning rather badly, and he would like to work on that ERA. I'm sure he needs to get some innings where he throws up some zeros. Twenty thousand sixty-four paid attendance this afternoon for the final home game. Just bring the sign. Put you're on. on TV. You're, you're on, on TV. That's all you got to do, right there. The hotel now faces Orlando Cabrera with two outs and nobody on. Parrot has had a busy afternoon. He's been, been everywhere, all man. over this ballpark, as he should be with all the kids here. He can't wait to get back to his cage, and his newspaper. Have some peanuts, a couple of sunflower seeds. That's all he's going to eat, Bob. Are you serious? Look at him. He, he eats more than yeah. most birds you'll run into. More than just a couple of peanuts and sunflower seeds, huh? Now, what could, what could a bird eat that would be fattening? Is there any kind of seeds that are like loaded in carbs? Right? Not March, is it? Fly ball to left. Quick inning. End of the bottom of the ninth. Five, nothing since he. Five nothing Cincinnati. In case you missed it around the major leagues, the Reds return home and they'll host the Civil Rights game, which will be Saturday against the Cardinals. Both teams will wear throwback uniforms, circa 1947. There will be roundtable discussions during the afternoon and uh, quite a list of uh, people on hand for that game. Jason Marquis expected to undergo elbow surgery, could miss up to 10 weeks. We'll go back to that. Strike called. On hockey, rather on Delwyn Young pinch hitting Rick Porcello. Seven innings of three hit ball. Tigers lead the Yankees two zip in the seventh. Craig Stammen of the Nationals. Two for three at the plate. And the Nats leading the Mets four to two and trying to forget about a disappointing loss yesterday at City Field. Atlanta leads the Brewers. And the Cubs in front of the Florida Marlins at Wrigley. Homer Bailey now looking for his first career shutout. Last night, Johnny Cueto, his first career shutout. I imagine they'll have to go uh, back to the record books a long, long time to find out when the last time two pitchers 
pitched their first career shutouts back to back. Well, what was amazing is that 89 pitches going into the ninth inning for Cueto. And I thought that that was very impressive. And uh, Homer Bailey, he starts uh, the ninth inning with just 80 pitches. With both of them. I mean, that's the, the hallmark of their games or the efficiency, keeping the pitch count extremely low. Now, and Young goes up and chases for the sixth strikeout for Homer Bailey. And there you look at that incredible pitch count. His last start, as we mentioned, he threw 120 pitches. And you're talking six and two thirds innings. There's Cueto. Swinging on the first pitch. Fly ball out to left. Ivo Mora 0 for 11 in the series and one for his last 29 at bats. Not a happy day in that pirate clubhouse dugout. Crosby taking a strike. It's a day off tomorrow. I'll try to figure this thing out. This homestand really looked promising. Did not turn out that way. Took three games from the Cubs to get the ball rolling. And we get to go see the Cubs again in three games. So. As I said earlier, maybe that's what we need. Wow, 90 pitches. That is unbelievable. But the Reds do it. Last back to back complete game shutouts by the Reds. You have to go back to 1989. Did it back to back against the Los Angeles Dodgers. Cueto pitched the one hit shutout last night, and today, Homer Bailey. A four hit shutout. And a five nothing victory and a sweep of the three game series. Well, you know, Kirk, uh, you, you can't do anything about stuff that's already happened, and these two shutouts are done and over with. But uh, the, the club really has to, you know, I think do a little reflecting tomorrow on, on their, what their approach is at the plate, what they're trying to do in these at bats. And uh, you know, I don't know if the lineup needs to be, you know, thrown in a hat and pulled out or something. But um, you know, I, I was waiting for better starting pitching, hoping that that would be, you know, what cures our ills. We've gotten better starting pitching, but now the offense seems to have gotten into a funk. Next telecast, Pirates baseball.